Kia ora, mothers and everybody who has experienced domestic violence or abuse in their childhood. This topic is very dear to my heart because I have not only experienced domestic violence and abuse in my own childhood, but I have seen it in many others and know what deep and lasting impact it has on our lives when we grow up, become adults, and later on possibly become mothers. So why is this so important to me? Well, I briefly share um, a little bit of the story with you, why it's so important for me to make people aware that domestic violence is something that affects us all and that we as a community have to deal with and not just one particular person. I also don't believe that the answers to domestic violence is by punishing the abuser um, because most of the time a person who is abusing in some form, whether it's mentally, emotionally or physically, has had that experience in their own childhood and they have not become aware of it and they are just repeating a pattern in a way that they have been brought up to. So how does it really um, affect us? Well, when you are really little, and I'm talking about three, four, five, six years old, you are not in the position to say this is right or this is wrong. You are like a little sponge taking up and and um, uh, yeah t taking up anything that you are exposed to and that is not just words it's also the way for example your parents interact with each other or the way they are talking or fighting with each other um, how is an argument settled in your home is it or was settled in your home? Is it in the way or in the sense that the father has the last word or whoever shouts the loudest um, gets his, his um, word and argument through? I grew up in, um, in a very domin father dominating household and have been experiencing domestic, mentally and emotional um, and physical abuse in, and violence in my home. So what I picked up as a child, and again, I wasn't aware of that, but what I picked up is that I have to fight in order to live. Fighting is part of um, survival. And the other thing I picked up is that women are weak and men get away with everything they want to, no matter what they do. So I continued um, my upbringing, so to speak, when I went to school and I encountered bullies, like my father was a bully, my response was fighting him and actually physically fighting him. I made appointments with them after school uh, at the school ground and physically fought them. That was what I learned at home. Um, the next um, kind of thing I learned is to protect the ones that are kind of weaker. So I became class speaker, I became school speaker. Later on um, in, in many of uh, the works that I did in hospitality um, and when I encountered something that wasn't fair or right or somebody was suppressed, I would speak up because I have experienced you have to fight in order to get hurt. Um, it wasn't always fun. I lost a few jobs through this because I did not keep my mouth shut. Um, but what was kind of worse, I wasn't aware at, until I was in my 30s that life is not about fighting and that there is another way to live. And the time I really woke up and realized that I was repeating the same stuff that happened in my childhood is when I was um, married and I had three young children and at some point I could see myself in the same argument with my then husband that
than my parents were and us being really yell loud and yelling at each other and almost getting physical and my little one standing beside me watching this and crying. That was the moment when it really made click and I realized I had to change something because I did not want my children to go through the same stuff that I went through. So what I'm saying here is domestic violence is a family pattern that usually is passed on from generation to generation until we become aware that this is a pattern and looking at, at that as a pattern and not, not just as I blame the abuser, um, he has to be punished, he has to, you know, go to go into prison or, or some other form of punishment. That is not solving the continuation of the pattern. The first thing I did is I worked on myself because I did not want to continue um, passing on this abusive pattern or this domestic violent pattern. Most of us are not even aware that we are doing it. So awareness was the first thing. Then finding a method or a tool that helped me to release those patterns and to change my perspective on life and realizing that I am worthy of having a life that is, um, has a loving environment and does not have to include fighting with, um, in particular, men, but also dominating figures. And ultimately, it, when I, I actually left uh, my husband for various reasons, but that was one of the main ones. And uh, obviously, I questioned myself a lot. This is another thing that um, survivors of domestic abuse often do, um, thinking or not really trusting themselves and trusting their decisions. However, I thought, uh, not I thought, I know this was the best decision I've ever done. And then I started working on myself and released those patterns and started healing and starting loving myself and created a loving environment for my children, which I believe is one of the biggest gifts you can give your children. Money is not important. Status is not important not to the child anyway. A loving environment is the biggest gift we can give our children. And therefore, I believe we all play a part in releasing domestic violence for good. It still is happening in many, many countries, not just in one, in many countries. It still is not talked about a lot. And if only then, if something really extreme has happened um, and usually then one party gets punished and um, the other one is again left on their own and will continue with the next partner the same pattern and the same um, stuff that happened before until they transform and release the pattern within themselves um, and through this helping their children growing up in a different environment, creating different patterns. And for me, that is the way to deal with domestic violence all over the world. Um, I'm not condoning abusers, um, certainly not. That's not my message here. My message is, though, that most of the people who are either on the victim side or on the accuser side have experienced domestic violence in their own home. And until we change it first within our own inner world, so to speak, passing something new on to our children, who then in turn, again, passing on those loving patterns to their children in the next generation, we will continue to having to deal with domestic violence. And I find this is um, extremely sad, especially in these days, where we have so many methods and tools available that can help both the accuser and the victim to break those patterns and create new ones for themselves that are more loving, loving themselves. 
loving and trusting themselves, trusting life, um, not fighting, but enjoying and seeing life um, as a gift. So I, that was, it, it, it's very dear to my heart and I just wanted to share that with you today. And obviously in my case, I have learned to release those limiting patterns and the patterns of domestic violence and abuse with my two points, one smile method. So if you are sitting there and have experienced domestic violence, either as the victim or as the accuser, um, or you know someone who would like to release those patterns, especially being a mom, um, knowing that you want the best for your children, for their future, then just um, get in touch with me and I see um, if I can help you. Bye for now.